to this presentation in which I'm going to present a new project called GridUp in which we have been working on during the last months. So first of all, I would like to mention that this is a collaborative work between Santiago Badia, his full professor at Monash University, and myself, Frances Verdugo, that I'm assistant professor at Simne. So what is the, the goal of this project? What, what, what is GridUp for? So in short, GridUp is a library for solving partial differential equations, or PDEs, using finite elements. And as you can see from this picture, for our research, we are interested in solving uh, different types of PDEs with different types of finite element methods. This includes from the most basic PDEs like linear steady state problems to more complex settings uh, like nonlinear, transient, multi-scale, and even multi-physics applications. And of course, we are interested in solving all these problem types efficiently in order to be able to solve uh, real-world applications. So GridUp, as I have said, is a finite element framework written in Julia. It's written in Julia. It's an open source project hosted at GitHub and it's distributed with a mid license. And as you can see, the problem, the project is very young. So the first commit dates back to March 2019. And since then we have been working quite a lot on this, on this project. And now we have more than 2000 commits and more than uh, 60,000 lines of code in our code base, which shows that even though it's a quite young, it's a very young project, we have already implemented a lot of functionality. So GridUp is hosted at GitHub, and if you if you go to this GitHub organization, you will see um, uh, several repositories. First of all, uh, and most important is this one, the repository called GridUp.jl. Here is where we store a GridUp package called GridUp, the GridUp package called GridUp. And here we have implemented uh, the, the basic functionality needed for, for a basic finite simulation. So here we have uh, different things related with geometry, all the things related with interpolation, like polynomials and finite element spaces, we also have um, uh, the part related with numerical integration, etc. So apart from this basic uh, repository, this core repository, we have other ones in which we have implemented some extensions. So these other repositories can be thought like plugins of the of the core one. And here, for instance, we have GridUp GMesh. So this is a Julia package which allows us to read and structure meshes generated by by GMesh and use them in GridUp. And for instance, here we have GitHub Embedded, which is also a Julia package, which in which we have implemented several types of embedded finite element methods. So apart from these repositories in which we implement some functionality, we have this other one, the tutorial repository, in which we have implemented a, a series of tutorials in order to show users how they can uh, solve PDs using our library. And if you go to our tutorial repository, you will see that here we have some tutorials um, describing some features of the library by solving some different partial differential equations. So we start with the Poisson equations, and here we show how to solve a very simple PDE, and then we start complicating things, so linear elasticity. So here we start solving vector value problems, Phil Laplacian, so nonlinear problems, hyperelasticity, so even more complex nonlinear problems. And then here we have DG, so the library, the library also supports discontinuous Galerkin methods. And here we show how to solve a Poisson equation with discontinuous Galerkin methods. Then the library also supports uh, hybrid elements with Rabiatoma interpolations. And here we show how to solve a Darcy equation with these techniques. And finally, we, we move to more, to, more, to more complex settings like incompressible Navier Stoic equations, so nonlinear multi field PDEs. And here, isotropic damage model. This is a nonlinear solid mechanics problem with state variables. So, state variables can be also um, handled with this library. And finally, we have here a tutorial on fluid structure interaction in which we show how, how you can solve surface coupled PDs. So now at this point of the presentation, I would like to, to comment on which are the, the main novelties of GridUp with respect to other finite element libraries that are available on the internet. So first of all, uh, the first novelty is that GridUp is written in Julia 
whereas most of the other finite element libraries are written in object-oriented la uh, languages like C++ or Modern Fortran. So we believe that, we believe that this feature makes Grida quite unique. So another novelty, or perhaps more than a novelty, it's a characteristic of the library, is that GridUp supports an arbitrary number of space dimensions, right? So you can solve PDEs in one, two, or three D, like with other libraries. But then you can you can move on, so you can uh, solve PDEs in four D, five D, etc. So here the only limitation is, of course, computational resources. But uh, in my laptop, I have been able to solve, uh, for instance, a uh, uh, a Poisson problem uh, in four dimensions with about one million of 4D cells, which really shows that with GridUp you can solve problems in, you can also solve problems in 4D efficiently. Okay, so another characteristic of the, of the library is that GridUp supports an arbitrary cell topology. This is also in contrast to other finite libraries. For instance, in Phoenix, as far as I know, they are quite restricted to triangles and tetrahedra. And for instance, in DIL2, they are uh, restricted to quads and hex, right? And in GridUp, you can, you can use both. You, you can use triangles, squares in 2D, and also uh, tets and hex in 3D. And if you, go to, if you want to go to 4D, you can use both pentatops and, and tesseracts, if you wish. Okay, and finally, the, the, the other uh, main novelty of the package is that the GridUp has a very expressive user API. So with with GridUp, uh, a user can can build uh, can build quite sophisticated finite element softwares uh, by using very few lines of code. And we have achieved this by using the concept of lazy evaluation, as I, I want to illustrate later in the in the presentation. So now, in order to give you a feeling of of, of how of how this uh, API looks like. I, here I have a small example in, in which I'm solving a Poisson problem using uh, a standard finite element method. And you can see you can see here that with very few lines of code, I'm able to, to, to build a, a complete finite element software with all its main in ingredients, right? So here, here we have the Cartesian mesh, um, uh, finite element spaces, here I, I define the weak form, then I solve the problem, and I write the results to to VTK, to VTK in order to be visualized with Paraview. Okay, perhaps the, the, the most important part of this API, or the most significant aspect of this API, is the way the user can specify the weak form. So as you can see here in line 10, or here bigger, so the user specifies the bilinear form and linear form of the problem, using a syntax which is closely related with the syntax used to express these this objects mathematically. So in GridUp, you can, you can specify the weak form and the linear, so the weak form of the problem by using a very uh, syntax similar to the one you would use in, to write a paper, right? And we believe that achieving this is, an, is not an obvious task. And in particular, the difficult part is try to hide to hide the finite element assembly loop, which is going on here associated with this uh, weak form. So for instance, with other finite element libraries, the user needs to, to write this assembly loop explicitly. So with DIL2, the, the user needs to spend quite, quite, a, quite a significant amount of lines of code in order to write this assembly loop in which you loop over cells, compute local matrix and vector, and then you assemble them into the global system. So here, all these lines should be explicitly written by the, by the user in, the, in that library. The same for UFM, so uh, a significant number of lines of code are needed to, to write this assembly loop. Whereas in other libraries like ReadUp Read Up and, and Phoenix, this loop is completely hidden from, from the user. However, this true, even though these, these two libraries are able to hide the assembly loop, um, the way they accomplish this is quite is very different. So for instance, Phoenix is built on a quite uh, complex strategy based on a compiler for variational forms in which so this, this compiler essentially parses the, the user code uh, defining the, bilinear, uh, the, the weak form of the problem. And from that, it generates 
a efficient C++ code tailored for this problem type, and this code gets compiled, compiled and eventually linked into the user application, which of course leads to a quite performant um, final element solver at, at the end. Whereas in GridUp, we follow an, an, an alternative approach that we believe that it's much more simple, right? So here, essentially, we rely on two main concepts. The first one is to use lazy evaluation in order to represent large arrays. And the second thing we use is to take advantage of the Julia just-in-time compiler in order to to generate specifics or specialized code to, for the particular problem the user wants to solve. Okay. Now, yeah, if, even though we follow a much simpler approach than Phoenix to hide this uh, assembly loop, the, the result is that now we are almost as efficient as Phoenix. So here I have measured the CPU times in order to, to do the finite element assembly for several problem sizes. And as you can see here, for the biggest problem size, for 3 million elements, for Phoenix, you, you would expect a, you would, you would, you would ex, uh, spend a, about 6 seconds to do this assembly loop, whereas in GridUp now we are uh, about 7 seconds, a little bit more than, than 7 seconds. If you look to these results in relative terms, so now for the, for the largest problem, GridUp now is only 1.2 two times slower than, than Phoenix. And we believe that these results are quite good results, taking into account that GridUp is a very young project. So essentially, essentially in this one year of life of the project, we have focused in implementing new functionality instead of profiling code and, and, and building efficient code, right? Whereas Phoenix is a, a much larger project with a very so with a, a, with a very long tradition and they have expended quite a lot of time into developing this compiler of variational vari forms in which which can generate pretty efficient code so at the end of the day we are happy with these preliminary performance results and we are, and we are confident that in, in the near future we will we will be able to to even improve our timings and be even closer to to phoenix so now, at this second part of the presentation, I would like to consider a simple example in order to illustrate this concept of lazy evaluation that we have used in GridUp in order to hide these finite element assembly loops. And in this, and in this very simple example, so the goal is the following. So we have a function, right? We have this function. And we want to evaluate, evaluate this function at the midpoints of the cells of a given mesh and then visualize the results. Okay? If, if you try to, to figure out how you would do this with your favorite finite library, you're probably thinking in writing a loop over cells in order to solve this problem. Right? So you loop over cells, then at each cell you extract the coordinates of the nodes for the cell, then from this you compute the midpoint for the cell, and then you evaluate the, the function at, mid, at the midpoint, and then during the process you you fill you fill up a vector with all the with all these results, and at the end of the loop you write down this this vector into a format that, that can be visualized, for instance, with ParaView, and then you visualize the result. Okay. Uh, the good thing of the good thing of GridUp is that you can solve the same problem without reading, without writing any any loop over the cells. Okay, this this is just a, a very small example, but illustrates how the all these loops over cells are, are hidden are hidden from the from the user API, and at the end of the day, we are using a very similar functionality in order to hide the the assembly loop. Okay, for this for this particular example, the first step is to read. Uh, finite element mesh. In that case, uh, in GridUp, finite element meshes are called, dis are, are called discrete models. And here we read a discrete model from a JSON file. So this model has information about vertices, edges, faces, and cells, right? And from this model, in that example, we're interested in in the cells. So we need to extract the we need to extract the cells from the model, and this is done with this constructor. So here we, we extract the triangulations of cells. So the cell triangulation associated with the model. And now here 
comes another nice feature feature of 3 dap right so in 3 dap you can visualize almost anything that it makes sense to visualize and in particular here we have the cells of our model and this is a quantity that it makes sense to to visualize so we can visualize it uh, with Rida by writing it into VTK format with this function, and then you can open it in Paraview and see that we, so we are considering in this example this, this finite element mesh. So now we have the mesh, and the next step is to extract the nodal coordinates of the cells of this mesh. So this is done with this function, get cell coordinates, uh, the input is the so the cells the triangulation containing the cells and the output is a vector so this is a vector you can see it here that this vector contains for all for each cell in the triangulation the nodal coordinates of this cell so you can see this vector has length equal to the number of cells in the triangulation and if you index this vector for a particular cell id for instance here for cell id equal 25 you will get the nodal coordinates for the nodes of this cell. So here we have triangular cells, right? You can see you have triangular cells. So you will get the coordinates of the three nodes of these cells. So you will, you will get this vector of the, of, with these coordinates of, this, of these nodes. So now we have the, yes. So now we have this vector of, of cell-wise of cell nodal coordinates. And here the important thing is to, ra to realize that this vector is a lazy array. Right? So here we are, we are not storing all these coordinates simultaneously for all cells. Instead of that, we are, we are, we are considering, considering a lazy array in which we compute these coordinates on the fly when we ask for them. For, inst for instance, here, when, we ask, when, we, when the user asks for the coordinates of a particular cell, then on the fly, we are able to compute these coordinates and, and provide them to the user. So at the end of the day, we are not computing all the cord we are not storing in memory all the cell-wise coordinates simultaneously, which of course reduces the, am the, am the amount of memory needed to represent this, this object, which is of course very, a, very, a very nice feature for, for large computations in which you have very large triangulations with a lot of cells. So if, if, you, if you're interested in, in seeing what's going on under, under the hood, under, underneath this object, you can use this, this function, print operation tree, in order to, to see which arrays are actually stored here underneath this object. And in that case, you can see, you can see that we have three different arrays. Here, this one, this is an array of vector values. So this is an array of nodal coordinates in which we store the coordinates for all nodes of the mesh. And then we have these two arrays which encode the, connect, the connectivities of the cells in our mesh. So the nodes, the nodes IDs for each cell in our mesh. So with this information, as you can see, we are able to, so, to, to, to implement this, this object, right? So if you, if you want to extract the cell nodal coordinates for a particular cell, so when you index this array, what happens here is that you retrieve the nodal IDs for this particular cell by using these cell co connectivities. And then with the node IDs, you go to the vector of nodal coordinates and you get the the coordinates for, for the particular cell. So now we have the coordinates for the, of the cells, and the next step is to compute the midpoint. And this is done in readup by using this apply function. So here the idea is to, to define a function that computes the cell midpoint for a given cell. So here this function, um, the input is the array, the, array, the array of novel coordinates of the cell and the output is the midpoint of this cell. So once we have this function, which can be thought as a computational kernel, we can apply this function to all cell coordinates simultaneously, right? And the result is another vector that when we index this vector for a particular cell, we will get the coordinate of the midpoint for this cell. Right? So this is, again, an, a, a lazy vector. So you can see here it's a vector. And for each cell, when, you, when we index this array for, that, for a given cell, you, we get the coordinates of the midpoint of that cell. And again, this is a, a lazy vector. And you can see the operation tree that is associated with, ob, with this object. And, and you can see here that now we are growing this operation tree. So we have the operation tree we had before. And now we have increased this operation tree with this function that, that computes the cell midpoint. And now we are, yeah, and now 
we are ready to visualize these results. So as, as, as I have said, in Grida you can visualize almost anything that it makes sense to visualize. To visualize. So this is, a, this, is, this is a vector of coordinates. So this is a quantity that you can visualize and you can write it into VTK format and visualize in Paraview to, to check that. So this, you have performed this, this step correctly. So you can visually check that you have been, that you have done this work correctly. So now from that, we can evaluate the function and this is the same idea. So we, apply, we, we define this function and we apply this function to the vector containing the cell midpoints. And again, this is an object, this is a vector, a lazy vector. Then when you implement, uh, when you index, sorry, this vector for a particular cell, you will get the value of function f at the, mid, at the midpoint of this, of this cell. And again, this is a lazy array. And if you print the operation tree that's going here on the, under the hood, you will see that now we have included function f into this operation tree. And finally, you can visualize results. So we visualize the value of f on top of the cell midpoints. And, and we say that this, so this, this data, these, these values of f are, are going to be visualized, visualized as nodal data. Then this will generate a file, a VTK file that can be opened in Paraview. And with that information, you can build this, this visualization. So as you, can, as you can see, as you have seen in with this, with this example, so we, we were able to solve this example without, write, without writing any loop over cells, which shows that GridUp has a very nice API in order to work with cell-wise quantities. So you, with very few lines of code, you can very effectively work with cell-wise quantities. So I'm, I'm finishing my, my presentation with this. Um, now I just want to, to mention a few ideas about future work. So in the, in the near future, we, we, we plan to implement some, some new functionality that we need for, for our research. So in particular, we plan to implement HP adaptivity in GridUp. And also we may plan to implement space-time methods in order to solve uh, time-dependent PDEs. And perhaps most importantly, in the uh, now, right now actually, we are already working in the in the distributed memory extension of Freedup in this repository, which is called Freedup Distributed. And here is the goal. The goal of this new repository is being able to solve large problem with parallel machines with parallel distributed memory machines in order to solve large problems to, to solve real uh, world applications. And now uh, with this repository, we already have we already have some preliminary results thanks to the nice work of Alberto Martin at Monash University. And now with this uh, project with GRIAP distributed, we are able to solve large Poisson equations with about 1 billion of hexahedral cells on, on the order of tens of thousands of processors in about the order of, the order of eight, 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 18, 18 seconds. And on top of that, we, we already have uh, some weak scaling results. And as you can see in this, in this picture, we are obtaining a quite decent weak scaling up to few hundreds, uh, sorry, few thousand, up to few thousand of processors, right, with, with our code. In any case, these, these are just very pre preliminary results with a very uh, easy PDE, but, it already, but we are already very happy, but it already shows that we are starting to be able to solve large problems in parallel, so in distributed memory computers by using Julia and GridUp, and we are certain that this will open to, to new opportunities and, and to exciting research. So this has been my presentation. It has been a pleasure to be in JuliaCon this year, even though it has been an online conference. And that's all. So thank you very much for your attention and see you next time.